In this movie, the fourth one and the last one will actually be focusing on the actions palette for our frog project. I wanted to take you through the work that's been done to date. There's going to be more work completed, and you'll be able to see that when you open the working files. However, I wanted to describe and reveal how some of these things are pulled off and how you proof this inside your work. Now, this is the master uh, frog front actions file. This is important because as we work on the rest of the animation, or I should say the real project as this finishes out, every time a new figure or new expression is created in the course of working somewhere else in the animation, the first thing I do is come back to this master file and replicate it here so that the next time I create a frog front view section of this animation, all the expressions are there. Let's take a quick spin through and see what we've got going on because some of these have embedded animations in them. With the body layer selected, we'll see now that we've got simply the body look right and the body look left. I don't have the worried moniker on here because I didn't really make the eyes look worried in that one, but all we need to do is double click that and we see the body shift there. Look right and the body shifts over there. Pretty easy. Same thing for frog head. We've got head left. We've got head look right head reference, and main. Now the eyes is where some of the special stuff is going on. I added several blink cycles in here, knowing that we can add the blinks individually to each eye or to both eyes at the same time. I've got my eyes look left file. When I double click on that with the top layer selected, you see the eyebrows and everything move into place as expected. Come back to main line. Eyes half closed, when I click on that, you see a little bit of movement, but nothing is going on. And that's because if we were to disclose this folder and look at different things going on with the eyes, we would see that we actually have an animation in here. The animation stops with the eyes half closed. So they will stay there until I insert another action to bring them back to normal, or they'll just stay like that. I can also do it with one eye at a time for those kind of weird expressions. I'll bring this back to frame one in my timeline. The blink squint is another one that's got an animation involved. It's a fast one. The eyes actually close, and you'll notice that it looks like the pupils are still showing. Well, they aren't really. That one is right there. If we do a quick render of this one, let me bring this over. You'll see the eye is, is turning, uh, well, we've got a little shadow on there, and then it disappears and has this funny little shape. That's intentional, and it's just because it creates a little bizarreness as the blink happens real fast that I wanted to include in the file. It's a quick cycle. It happens in less than half a second. So as I drag the time slider through here, you see it about as fast as it actually occurs. Next one we've got, let me bring the timeline back to one and get rid of our onion skinning is blink once asymmetrically. This is a case where I wouldn't apply this individually to an eye. I would apply this definitely to both. But it's a slow moving action where the eyes blink and then recover, but they're just a little out of sync. So we've got that going on. Back at timeline one, we'll come back to blink fast double. And this is one that I might actually use on eyes individually. These blink cycles can be added to the eyes looking worried. I can have the character looking left or right, and I can have the eyes blink at the same time. It's pretty cool. As I drag through this one, we have our typical quick blinks there, either of shock and amazement or something like that. There are many other expressions that you'll want to add to your actions palette and spend some serious time up front working on it because when it comes to actually doing the animation, it is so fast and easy. It's great to work with actions this way. They save you so much time on the backside and more importantly than saving you time is creating a consistency of experience. In the next movie, we'll look at how we start creating some of the traffic that we're going to have going in front of the frog before we build out the final scene and do our actual animation.